In today's video, we're taking a look at my ultimate streaming setup. Let's dive in. My name is Tyler, welcome back to Nanotech, and as I mentioned, we are taking a look at my ultimate streaming setup. Dual PC, all the consoles, multiple monitors, a TV, it's the works. Some background on me, I have been doing this now at a full-time level for over four years, and I just am someone that likes to invest back to my setup to make and produce the best product I can to put out on the internet. So a lot of stuff you're seeing, I maybe have had for four years, three years, two years. This isn't something I bought last week, and now here, hey guys, look at my setup. I feel like a lot of people don't say that enough. This is not something to truly Really try to like emulate on your own. If you've got the money, you want to do it, sure, go ahead. It's just, you don't need all this. Secondly, you won't find a ton of RGB here. Um, I go ahead and let the PCs kind of handle the RGB side. I try to keep it more clean, more of a clean aesthetic, except for one secret thing, which you'll see at the very end. And lastly, before I get up and we dive into this, I'll ask a little something of you. If you could hit that like button right now, it would help me a ton. And if you're new to the channel, if you could subscribe, be here for more of the content. I love that as well. With that said, let's hop into it. And here is the full setup. Now I wanna use the first half of this video to really just discuss everything that's here. And then the second half to do a deep dive into what actually makes this tick. Like how, how is it that you see the actual stream happening, right? So of course, let's start with the, the main big dogs, right? Let's get a, a good shot of these two here because that is of course the dual PC setup that is just the most overkill thing ever. So starting off with the top PC, this is what I consider my actual stream PC. This is what delivers the stream actually to Twitch. And then the one down below is the one that actually is playing the games, etc. So the stream PC is the one that I actually have a video on the channel dedicated to it, to building it, but we can still go back over it here. So the main powerhouse in this is of course the AMD Threadripper 3970X. It is a 32 core CPU and it has the ability to process 64 threads. Then we have 128 gigs of Corsair's Dominator RAM in there, clocked at 3600. Now, the one thing that kind of holds us back is it does have an RTX 2080 Ti, but given the current landscape of things and the fact that this is also an editing PC and the 2080 Ti still kills all that, the 3090 would do better, but it is still, you know, it's still fantastic and um, getting GPUs is a little bit difficult right now. So it's got an RTX 2080 Ti. It has the MSI Creator motherboard in there. And then the cooling is actually hard tubes that I bit myself, again, an entire video dedicated to this. And that's everything that's cooling there. You have a radiator up top and a radiator down bottom. I did all those through Corsair's Hydro Series X program and uh, it was really easy to use and it was super friggin' dope. As far as actual capture cards in this, we have three capture cards. We have a Elgato Mark II 4K60 Pro and two Abermedia 4K um, live gamer capture cards. And what's happening with those is one is capturing the other PC, one is capturing the feed from the consoles, and then one is capturing the feed from my phones. So that way I there's no hold bars situation. I can capture anything I want whenever I want and it's a seamless transition when I'm live if I want to go from mobile games to PC to console, whatever, I'm ready to go. Then moving on down here, this is the, of course, quote unquote, gaming PC. We have the RTX 3090 there, which you can see I have my figure where it's Goku sitting on. He's fine. I don't know if I'll keep him there the whole time because the temps can get hot, but you know, we got to have the presentation here today. Then of course the screen you can see there is actually the NZXT Kraken Z73. You can put pretty much any GIF you want on it and it's the actual all-in-one cooler from NZXT. We have more of Corsair's Dominator RAM, only 64 gigs in this, but more than enough for a gaming only PC. Again, there's the RTX 3090, which is absolutely massive. Also the motherboard in this is an Asus Maximus Hero. And I should have mentioned this, but the case on this one right here is the NZXT H710i. And the one up here is of course a Lian Li, which I think this case is just remarkable. Like I, I'm sure if you watch any of these videos, you know, you've seen this. A lot of people use these because they just have so much visibility. And if you're gonna go to this much work to bend tubes and do all that, you wanna be able to see all your hard work. So anyway, there you go. Streaming PC, gaming PC, 
And the thing that sucks with a setup like this is there's so many cables to make all this happen, have all these consoles being captured, another PC being captured, you know, a mobile phone being captured. There has to be so many cables, but we've done a pretty good job of having everything cable managed. Um, I had a friend, my, my buddy Brooks, kind of helped me with it. We have everything running here. And, you know, obviously you can see some stuff over here, but everything that's having to be ran here and worked on, like, I don't know if you can tell, but cable management, pretty on point. Not too, not too shabby, not too shabby. Could we go a little more D on it? Sure, but I think we're doing all right. Um, so right here we have the Elgato key lights, two of them right here to kind of light me up. I have one direct face, one indirect. The acoustic panels back there, I thought when I finally finished this, this has actually kind of been a transformation of my setup. I actually thought I might get rid of this one and that one down there, but I've left them. They actually don't bother me as much as I thought they would. They're geek acoustic panels and you can actually customize how you want that graphic to be, and you can also customize the color of the fabric on the inside. So there's a lot you can do with these. They are a little bit expensive, but I just wanted to have the best of the best in here, and I, my echo was so bad when we first got in here that I just, I had to do something about it. And then of course the actual displays here, they are all three Acer Predator XB3, so they are 4K. They're 120 native, you can overclock to 144. The thing that holds these monitors back from being truly great is their HDR. They're only rated for HDR 400, but they still get the job done, and I can't quite take the full capability of anything above 4K 60 anyway, because I'm capturing stuff, so, I just kind of, I kind of work with what I've got, but these actually, these are great. I love them. Honestly, they're more of a budget 4K monitor and I really, really like them a lot. And then moving past that onto some stuff on the actual desk. This is my personal controller of choice if I can use it, the Astro C40. I saw some not great reviews of this, but I repositioned, it comes initially as a, it's a PS4 controller and you can actually, it's modular, so you can change this out. So I made it more of the Xbox style and um, I really like this controller a lot and it works natively on PC and of course on PS4 with PS4 games too. And it's, it's great. I really, really, really like that controller. Then we've got the Rode boom arm here. I'm not the biggest fan of this, but there's not a whole lot of options unless you want to spend just, just crazy amounts for a boom arm and it gets the job done. And we've got attached to that pretty typical streamer mic, broadcast mic, the Shure SM7B. I've thought about changing this out, but Man, when you're streaming and stuff, that you hit a certain like level and it just doesn't get too much better. Like your actual return on investment, once you pass probably like a $200 mic is just so minimal. So I've stuck with the Shure SM7B and it sounds just fine. Then actual peripherals, again, when you're running a dual PC setup, you've just got a lot going on here. So we've got both of the Logitech are actually what are plugged into the actual streaming PC. So we've got the G502 here, wireless. We've got the G915 keyboard here, wireless as well. Then I, crazy enough, where my gaming PC went wireless with the Naga Pro. So this is actually the one that has the interchangeable face plates. And then over here we have the Razer, sorry, that's a Razer as well. And then this is also the Razer Huntsman. Now these two might be getting changed out for some glorious uh, products very soon. So I may have a review of that coming up soon as well. And then what stream setup wouldn't be complete with an Elgato Stream Deck, hashtag free product. They sent that to me several years ago and uh, I still use it all the time. It's in one of my folders right now for one of my streaming scenes. Coming up here as far as the actual streaming camera itself, also this is how I record all the videos on Nanogenix. This is a Lumix GH4, it's a Panasonic camera. And what it has on here is actually an Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter 2.8 lens. So we can get some solid depth of field, that bokeh that everyone loves to see with that camera. And uh, I just wanted to have the versatility of being able to zoom it way out or zoom it way in if need be. Then coming down here, a pretty typical stream setup, the Go XLR. Again, we're gonna talk about more about how this setup is working in a second, but we gotta have a Go XLR. I love having the control that it gives me over my entire setup. The Wave 3 is a really good alternative to this that is much cheaper and honestly much easier to get a hold of. But this just offers me, honestly, this is the central a uh, main sort of thing that runs so much of the stream itself and my recordings and the level of control it gives me over my entire audio is just insane. Then right here, nothing too special. It's just a Series X controller to control, of course, my Series X. And then if we peek behind this monitor, you can see that my DAC of choice currently is a Sound Blaster X7. I've actually had this for a few years now. I'm thinking about upgrading to a JDS Labs Element 2. If any of you have one of those, let me know. 
is a little bit pricey, but I just kind of want to try something different. And then my actual headphones, which unfortunately, again, I just refuse to go wireless on audio. It would obviously wouldn't have this massive cable, but I just refuse to go wireless on audio. There's always a little bit of just kind of radio frequency sound in even the best of headphones. And so my choice here is the Bear Dynamics DT 1990 Pros. These also are super overkill. And I use the DT 990 Pros for the longest time, which are honestly way better for the money investment, but I was just looking to upgrade one month. And so I picked these up. Next up, we have, of course, the big, beautiful LG C10 TV. I have a computer running to this. I have, of course, all the consoles running to this. It's just beautiful. I mean, I can't say enough good things about this TV. And it truly, it's full on HDR, uh, capable Dolby Vision, all of that, um, 4K 120, and it blows these monitors just out of the water. It is absolutely stunning how beautiful of a display this is. And then for actual audio, when I don't wanna wear headphones and someone else is in the room with me, we have the Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers here, accompanied by an Audio Engine eight inch subwoofer. And um, the placement of these is not ideal, but I wanted the most amount of like, just coverage from them. So you can see them both here, this one all the way over on this. By the way, this desk is 80 inches. This is an absolutely massive, massive uplift desk and uh, it was quite expensive, but again, it was just 100% worth the investment. And so I'm able to route out my audio from here to there and control it totally. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful. And then to round out everything here that we haven't mentioned, of course, the PS5, the Xbox Series X, the <laughs> supposed to be covering the actual cables back there, but they don't make a long enough cable right now for me to make it to where it's long enough to actually have that pressed up against the wall because I need a proper 4K 120 cable that is longer than 15 foot to make my setup be 100% complete right now. So that is why that looks like that. And if we take a quick look under here, you'll see some of the stuff controlling the streams, my of course DualSense charger, I have my own home server, a switch over there, and then we actually have some closings for the actual um, additional things we'll talk about in a second. And then the final thing to talk about is of course my chair. I don't, I used to have some pretty typical gamer chairs, but I have in since invested into an actual Herman Miller M body here. I do wish it had a headrest. I wish I'd have got the one with the headrest, but that's neither here nor there. I won't have to buy one again for probably a decade. You want to protect your back, your posture, everything. And I fully, fully believe in this chair to just the maximum. I know you see a lot of people with these chairs now. I, I just love that chair so much and uh, I will not be going back to anything else ever again. Okay, so let's talk, let's get to the nitty gritty of this. I'll try to make this as fast as possible and show you what's happening here. I am choosing functionality for myself and making it as easy as possible for me to get a stream going over anything else, which does compromise a bit of image quality. But again, when you make content daily, you just, you, you get tired of having to do certain things and work around things. And what I mean by that is I can't have full 4K 120 from the consoles and things like that. HDR is a bit wonky, but I can fire a stream up at any second, use multiple displays, and it's fantastic. So let's start with the actual gaming PC itself. Um, again, as I mentioned before, this PC is the main video hub for everything. One capture card dedicated to the, the actual gaming PC, one capture card dedicated to the consoles over there, and one capture card dedicated to mobile gaming. PC itself is routing out three video feeds, three. One, of course, going into the capture card itself up here, one going into this central monitor right here, and then one going to the TV so I can play my <laughs> beautiful games on this beautiful TV right here. So again, that's what's causing this to not be able to be attached because they literally do not make a rem remotely feasible, cheap-ish HDMI cable that is long enough to run all the way over and be able to mount that to the actual wall or even go in wall. I can't do any of that because there's just not a cable long enough right now that I'm willing to spend the money on. Then from there, the one last thing that's coming out of this is a digital optical cable. I'll talk about more about that in a second. So coming out of this PC, just, just going to the three monitors, because again, that PC is entirely for streaming and editing. So the only things coming out of that are to here, here, and here. That's it. But if we come over here, 
We of course have a PS5, a Series X, and then you don't see it right now because it's in another room. That's all the hookups that I would need for my Switch. And all of this is routed in this device right here, which is a JTEC HDMI switcher and audio extractor. So what this is doing is taking in three HDMI signals, which it can then automatically change between. And those three signals are of course the actual switch signal here, the PS5 and the Series X. So it can bring in three signals and switch them for me automatically when it detects that they have become available, which is beautiful, especially for being able to just stream and have it just switch for me when I need it to. And then it sends an HDMI signal out of this to a splitter, we'll talk about that in a second, and it also is able to extract audio so it can turn the HDMI signal into either RCA or what I am using, which is digital optical cables. So this device right here is a JTEC digital optical splitter and switcher as well. So what this is housing is a digital optical signal from the gaming PC, as well as a digital optical signal from this device right here. So I totally forgot to mention this part, but the audio is then routed out from this all the way over to the Go XLR. And then the Go XLR takes in that audio signal to then send the audio signal from either the consoles or the PC to the stream or recording. So that's how that works. So I can switch between hearing the gaming PC audio or the audio from this actual switcher, which of course is gonna be again, the PS5 Series X or Switch Audio. So as I mentioned, this also has of course an HDMI signal it is sending out and it's sending that out to a splitter down here. And that splitter is then sending out four signals. And so all of that is then being sent out, like I said, to four devices. So one of those of course is this TV. So I can game on this TV if I want. It's then sending a signal over here to this monitor right here. Then it's sending a third signal to be captured on this capture card over here. And then of course the fourth signal, which we'll get to in just one second, it's the finale of the video. But to summarize, what this setup is allowing me to be able to do is at any moment during a stream, I'm able to switch between my mobile phone to a Series X capture, a PS5 capture, or a Nintendo Switch capture. And then I'm able to capture that audio separately and control it how I want for the stream to hear or for me to hear. And then if I want to as well, I can at any minute switch and capture this as well. And all I have to do is press a single button on that digital optical switcher and I'm hearing audio either from the gaming PC or from one of the consoles, just like that. And the biggest thing for me is I just wanted to have a, a no holds bar type setup here. That way, if I wanna play games on the TV, I can. If I wanna play games on a 27 inch gaming monitor, I can. And it can all be captured all at the same time. And for the final thing. All right, so I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not the biggest fan of RGB, so there's not a ton of RGB in my setup. However, I do have the Philips Hue sync, as well as of course the Philips Hue LED strip on the back of that, as well as another one that just kind of sits back here, which I hadn't really mentioned yet. It's chilling back there. Um, and they of course are taking in that HDMI signal and they're able to change the color based on what it sees, which is, it's, it's cool, man. I won't lie, it's pretty immersive. It's probably way more immersive than you might think. And I'm absolutely not able to capture it as well as I would like on any of my cameras, but I can promise you the Hue Sync is actually <laughs> pretty dope for what it is. Okay, so that was the video. As I mentioned way earlier, if you guys enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and be here for a full room tour because there's a lot more to the room that I didn't get to show today, but I just wanted to focus purely on the dual stream setup with the consoles and everything else. Anyways, y'all, that is the video. Hopefully I didn't lose too many of y'all with the explanation of what was going on there. Some of y'all may have skipped it, which is fine. I totally understand. That's more for the people that are just really out there wanting to see what's up. But with that, y'all have a great, great day. Keep on keeping on. Tyler here signing off. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys.